A quick online search showed that MyPillow annual revenues are a capital-tastic $280 million for 2020. Now, $280 million divided by 52 weeks comes to $5,384,000 per week. Just a back-of-the-napkin approximation shows that in the five weeks since GoodPillow's February 10th article and tweet, MyPillow has made around $27 million. GoodPillow has not only made a single dollar, or even a single pillow, it hasn't even made a single tweet. Now, after all of this pillow talk, I've decided that if David Hogg can't do it, well then, by God, Bill Whittle can't do it too. So, I'm announcing my own pillow company. It's called Bad Pillow. The revolutionary Bad Pillow has two distinct layers. Your head rests on the finest quality memory foam, gently curving to provide maximum cervical support, and comes with a custom pillowcase made from the finest Egyptian cotton with a thread count of over 9,000. The other side of my patented Bad Pillow consists of 11,000 steel ball bearings packed into a rectangular steel base embedded in a thin layer of finest quality RDX C4 plastic explosive activated by a 100% gluten-free PETN based debt cord, all of which is mounted onto not 10, not 20, but 415 layers of top quality 100% DuPont Kevlar. The pillow may be actively deployed against anti-personnel threats or, functioning as reactive armor, the bad pillow has been shown to defeat the 125mm smoothbore round used on the latest generation Russian T-14 Armada main battle tank. Once discharged, the 415 layers of genuine DuPont Kevlar still managed to stop a 50 caliber M82 Barrett round fired from a distance of 3 feet away, although some bruising may occur. The Bad Pillow is now available for pre-sale in four easy installments of $6,500, or you can get two Bad Pillows for only $29,999 if you order within the next 10 minutes. But hurry, because like Good Pillow and unlike My Pillow, supplies are limited. Despite, more likely because of, the endless bullying, the strident demands, the unparalleled arrogance, the unearned moral superiority, the disrespect for anything or anyone or any idea different than their own rigid code, their inhuman lack of humor or fun or the ability to see things from a different point of view because of all of the items in the woke salad bar of despair, no one wants these inhuman, inverted, and insane progressive values. No one is buying it. You see, these so-called new characters are not characters at all. These new takes on classic heroes are one-dimensional mouthpieces for a one-dimensional philosophy. They're eggs injected into a host organism, host organisms named James Bond and Doctor Who and Ghostbusters and the Terminator and Star Trek and Star Wars. Progressives are cultural parasites that inject their horrific values into these things because people like them. Well, they used to, anyway. Not anymore. These once thriving cultural icons have been utterly abandoned by the people who liked them, and in fact, by the people who have loved them dearly for their entire lives. All of these franchises that appeal to everyone because of their universal stories and their themes have been utterly abandoned because the SJW larvae injected into them have exploded out into plain view. You see, the left thought that they could use cultural mythologies like Star Wars and Star Trek as kind of a Trojan horse, a way to get past people's natural defenses against such vile ideas. They probably thought that if they put Woke into the Millennial Falcon or Starfleet uniform, then people would learn the lessons that were being hammered into them at every opportunity, but that's not what's happening. People, young people, the next two or even three generations, want nothing to do with re-education camps masquerading as entertainment. People would rather go hungry than consume this SJW poison. That's why I am so sure that despite all of today's turmoil and moral inversion, all of which, by the way, is going to get worse before they get better, we're going to win in the end.